This is Keys to the Shop, episode 390, Seven Ways to Be Competitive. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio. I am your host for the show. I'm always happy to have you here. Um, if you're new to the show, welcome. And it's been a long journey so far, six years, over 700 episodes, keys to the shop.com. Great place to check out for all of our past episodes. Also, the best thing you could do is subscribe to the show. And that way you get to uh, be updated with new episodes as they come out. It really helps the show to uh, get up there in the rankings so people find keys to the shop. And uh, sharing this episode, or even just the fact that there's this podcast, Keys to the Shop, is a great way to help as well. And I know so many of you have done that already. If you want to pass this along to people on your social platforms or in an email to your team, as you find the content useful and helpful for your business, that would be awesome. So thank you very much, everyone. And, you know, Keys to the Shop, on top of doing this podcast, also offers one-on-one coaching and consulting with coffee shop owners and soon to be coffee shop owners. Uh, Right now, you know, Keys to the Shop Consulting is working with both groups of people, people who are really wanting to start a great, thriving, people first, quality coffee shop and really be uh, an established part of their community, build something great with excellence in care for people and care for coffee. If you if you listen to the show, you know that this is the heartbeat of Keys to the Shop and I love helping entrepreneurs get started with their businesses as well as people who are already established as owners. You might be listening to this, you already have a couple of coffee bars, a few coffee bars or more, but you know that there are some elements as you've expanded that need attention, that need refinement, uh, systemization, and you want to make sure that you're making the right moves as you continue to grow your business. These are the things I work with uh, with my clients all the time. And so I would invite you to email me, chris at keys to the shop.com, and we'll set up a free discovery call to see how we can work together and how Keys to the Shop Consulting can come alongside of what you're doing in coffee and help give you clarity, solutions, and the tools for you to truly thrive. And so again, that email for Keys to the Shop Consulting, chris at keys to the shop.com. When I think about the story of coffee, I think there's so much that I want to communicate to the customer uh, about the coffee and how magical it is. And the first thing that a customer experiences in a coffee, of course, is the taste of the coffee. And if you want to be set up for an amazing taste experience in your cafe, you have to have the right equipment and one of the best pieces of equipment to really express what a coffee has to offer to make a good impression on your customers is the ground control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. This machine is revolutionizing batch brew coffee. You have only so many different kinds of machines out there to choose from until the category has been changed by the ground control. And if you go to groundcontrol.coffee, you can learn more about who's using this machine, what it's all about, and see the magic in action for yourself. Um, It's SCA award-winning technology gives you access to flavors that other equipment just couldn't give you. It gives you control over ranges of extraction that not only make it a great batch brewer, but also allows it to create tea, batched ice lattes, batched cold brew. And so this is not only an upgrade in quality, but it also opens up channels for profitability and efficiency in your coffee bar. So check them out at groundcontrol.coffee if you're looking for that quality upgrade and you're looking to take everything to the next level in your cafe. The Ground Control Cyclops Brewer is worth checking out. It's something I think you should consider for your cafe. Again, for more information, check them out over at groundcontrol.coffee. The ubiquity of plant-based beverages is the reality of coffee bars. You have lots of options when you walk into a coffee bar as a customer. You trust that they have done their due diligence. They've researched what they offer. And when you look into things like quality and consistency of product in plant-based beverages, 
more often than not, you end up landing on the barista series from Pacific. The barista series was created for baristas and every product is tested by amazing baristas from around the world before it even gets released to the public. So you know it performs on the bar the way you want it to. Stands up to the heat from steaming, produces amazing texture, and also it delivers unmatched balance in the beverage, in the coffee. Um, so this is the total package. Check them out over at pacificfoodservice.com. Get samples and try it for yourself. If you want the best quality plant-based beverages for your guests, then I think it needs to be the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to go over some uh, advice. I wanted to explore the idea of being competitive. And this is one of those uh, words that seems antithetical to community. It's except, you know, when you're in business, when you're an owner of a coffee bar versus a barista, I think this is just an accepted reality. You go from really just focusing on community, let's all just hang out, it's no big deal, we're all in the same industry, to really thinking, no, we really need to pay the bills, we need to be competitive, we need to start you know, uh, uh, worrying about this, right? And I, I would say maybe not the, you know, step in the direction of worry so much, but it is something that you need to focus on. Being competitive is uh, not necessarily, though, what we think it is. And when we think about that word, like I said, we think, okay, com being competitive is against community. And that's not necessarily the case. When we're talking about being competitive in this conversation, what we're trying to really zero in on is how you can be the best version of who you are as a business on the regular. On a regular basis, who you are as a business is not something that you've just kind of put on autopilot and allow you've allowed it to just kind of do its thing and there's not very much intentionality in there. Being competitive means that you're focused on performance, and that performance is you know, based on the game you're playing. And what's the game we're playing? The game we're playing and participating in is business. So you wanna become more profitable, and uh, for those of you listening to Keys to the Shop, I hope that that desire for growth or profitability and you know, being a healthy business is a people-focused pursuit and not just one that's opportunistic and, and not people-focused. So when you're competitive and you're in a game, you're really trying to do well. You're trying to do well for a good reason. And here's some reason, and this is maybe some preamble before we get into some advice. It, people can be competitive a couple of different ways. You can be competitive in a way that just wants to beat other people. That is not what I think is going to drive your business to success. Beating your competitors is not the only way to be competitive. You've all played board games with people who are competitive in a way that makes it not fun to play with them. But I've also played board games with people who, they are, they are competitive, but at the same time, they're not making you feel bad about uh, you know the fact that you may have gotten more points in that round. They're just trying themselves to you know, do better the next time. Okay, okay, I'm going to do better the next time. I'm going to pay more attention and maybe I'll make a better decision. That's the kind of thing that we need to focus on as businesses. Because then camaraderie, community can coexist with competition. So that's the kind of definition of competition I'm talking about. It's about self-improvement and the, the business itself improving and being a better version of itself all the time. And certainly there are moments of inspiration where you maybe drop the ball and you see that, you know, the other coffee shop in town has a huge win and it, set, it sets something off in your brain and you're like, wow, you know, maybe that's something that we should consider. And that's exactly the kind of things that we're going to talk about right now. And you know, hopefully with these seven areas, uh, they will allow you to approach um, your business in a way that will keep you fresh, keep you competitive, keep you as a serious player in the game, in your community. And that, in the end, creates a healthier industry 
it, it creates more uh, ability for you to do good with your business as it becomes more uh, successful. And so let's get right into it and start talking about this first piece of advice that I have for you. And that is that you don't want to employ desperation and slander or, or bad mouthing. I've worked for many coffee shops and thankfully um, there's always been a policy at these shops where we don't badmouth the competition, not even Starbucks, not even uh, big box retailers. And it's easy to do that. It's easy to put yourself in the position of superiority. And what that does both makes you look bad. First of all, it doesn't make you look as good as you think it makes you look. Um, second of all, it creates this feeling with that false superiority that really robs you of the energy of becoming better because you think you're already so good you can't improve. Well, and this goes down to just how you treat people around you. If you think you're better than other people, then how are you going to get better yourself? How can you make progress as a business if you think your business is already so much better? And, it's so, and a lot of independent coffee shops focus on this idea that we're not corporate and therefore we win. And that's why some of the worst coffee experiences I've had in my life have come from independent coffee shops who have gotten lazy around the idea of who they are based on who they're not. That's not exactly a great way to define yourself. So uh, the other thing here is you can use desperation uh, to uh, motivate yourself. You're desperate in seeking validation, but ultimately being desperate creates an opportunity for bad decisions to be made around things that you put on the menu, around things that you decide, around the way that you decide you need to um, work with your staff. And you may be desperate listening to this show and you say, okay, I'm going to take what Chris says, or I'm going to take what the guest that Chris is interviewing says, and I'm going to just, I'm going to apply this. And it's urgency and desperation are kind of different things. We've talked about this on the show before. We'll link to some related episodes in the show notes as always, but urgency has a little bit more patience involved. Desperation is completely an amygdala thing. It's the amygdala hijack that basically makes us unintelligent in the way that we make decisions. And so you can take really good ideas and misapply them and mishandle them. It's like using a hammer. You can use it to build a house or you can use it to assault a person. I mean, there's, any, there's lots of ways to mishandle things. Um, and it's either because of ignorance or fear or actual malice. And honestly, it's my contention that there's not that much malice out there compared to what people assume there is. It's just a lot of ignorance, maybe a lot of fear and fear making us act in unintelligent ways. So urgency is fine. You can accept the fact that you need to make some changes and apply things the correct way with some patience. Um, but desperation is going to make you seek validation through sweeping changes and decisions that negatively impact you, people that work for you and the business in general, and probably the industry. I mean, just think about the trope of the angry barista that has been continuing throughout our industry. Um, the reason why that's a trope is uh, for myriad reasons. It's, it's not just bad management. It's also just uh, bad hiring. It is um, people trying to find validation through snobbery in the craft of coffee. Again, desperation, false sense of superiority. You can find it in baristas. And when you find it in coffee shop owners and managers, it's multiplied tenfold and we get what we put out. So that's the first piece of advice on how to be competitive. And let's just call this being consciously competitive. Okay. Conscious competition. Uh, I think that's a better way to phrase this. So, um, in order to be that you need to reject desperation, reject the low hanging fruit of feeling superior to somebody by comparison and embrace reality and create a fuller picture of what's happening and compete with yourself. Like I said, you know, a better version of yourself, not somebody who's better than somebody else. Okay. So this brings us neatly into the second thing, which is trends and what they signal. So 
to be consciously competitive, I think, you know, since we've rejected urgency, I hope that it's not the case that you find a product on the internet or at a trade show and immediately just shoehorn it into your business because you're like, oh my gosh, this big trend is happening. Everyone wants matcha. Everyone wants boba. Everyone wants energy, this and that. And so we're going to do it because them's dollars we got to get, you know, like we're going to put this in and we're going to be successful. And the frothiness, the, the desperation, you can sense it, right? And people jump onto these trends. This is how they become trends. It, 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 a lot of the a lot of the trends that you see are happening because there's a lot of people making decisions not because they're the best decision for for their business because they feel like they don't have any other choice and they're really desperate for options so like anything i'll just put anything in there and you know, throw it at the wall and see what sticks kind of thing so when trends are happening whether they're happening for good reasons or bad reasons the fact is by the time you become aware of them you know okay this is a thing I can't stop it from being a thing, right? Now what you have to do is figure out what the trend signals. Why are people buying all this stuff? Why is it successful? Is it successful because innately people desire these sweet energy drink products? Or is it popular because it may look fun? Maybe it's popular because it's colorful. Maybe there's some roots to this that need to be paid attention to more than the fruit more than the actual product itself. You know, salespeople will be angry with this idea that, you know, it's not necessarily that your product is the answer. It's what your product symbolizes in the you know mind of the consumer that anybody can address. So in order to make a right decision for your business, you need to know what your customers want and what they value and see maybe there is a, a fun, colorful option for a beverage that we can uh, do in our business. That's not necessarily, you know, let's get on the phone and, you know, call that same vendor and get the same drinks in our coffee bar. Let's make it our version of that thing. That seems to be what customers are really craving these days. You know, things go in cycles. And when you pay attention that way, what you're doing is you're not only, um, uh, saving yourself from just glomming onto a trend for no real great reason, you're also investing more conscious effort into your business that will pay off later in other areas. You're practicing a mentality and a discipline that will, you know, be applied across different categories of your business. Okay. Um, but if you just hop on the trends because it's cool and, you know, it's fun, let's do it. Then that, then that same mentality is going to kind of apply flippantly to other areas and you see it start to encroach on how you schedule how you speak to people how you brew coffee so um, that's kind of the how you do one thing is how you do everything approach so when you see trends what you need to think about is what does this signal let's wait to see what's going on because chances are if it's worth doing it's going to stick around longer than just the moment. And if it just is a flash in the pan thing where all of a sudden everybody is doing, I don't know, make something up like strawberry lemon whipped cream or some weird thing. Like that would never be a thing, Chris. Well, there's a lot of stuff I never thought would be a thing, but it's, it's part of you know our business now. You see that pop up, your mind shouldn't be like, oh my gosh, we need that right now. Your mind should be like, let's see, let's approach this with a sober mind, okay, um, and not a, a mind that's hopped up on uh, colorful energy stuff. So anyway, uh, let's get into the third one. The third point I want to make about uh, staying consciously competitive and being consciously competitive is that you need a spirit of generosity. A spirit of generosity is the kind of thing that is a precursor to good hospitality and it is the thing that people expect the least in a transactional environment like a coffee shop where money is exchanged for coffee. They don't expect generosity as a mindset. And when I say generosity, I'm not saying give coffee away necessarily. What I'm saying is embrace people with a generous spirit that um, will remake drinks, will uh, make time for the individual, will not be only primarily concerned with 
driving through the shift and getting the most from your your customers it may be that you give some things away sometimes not on a regular basis but from time to time you offer your customers something that's just nice that's in tune with who they are and what they value uh, this conversation happens a lot around loyalty cards and points and stuff which is fine you can do that it's not a magic wand it doesn't make people automatically love you anybody who had the misfortune of you know working with groupon knows that the clients from groupon often tend to be mm, i don't know I, well we won't go there this is my personal <laughs> my personal experience but your coupon clipping friend and the person who's you know in my day at least when they present their coupons to the cash register employee and they, they're just like i want this discount i want that discount uh, you know you create these discounts you create expectation and it doesn't really produce the kind of thing that you hope that it would produce and that's because it's not relational it's a tool it's a system and it was divorced from the the heart and the intentionality that really speaks to generosity and speaks to hospitality and so when you operate with generosity you might say you know man it's Valentine's Day. Let's do something that our customers will really love. You know, we're not going to want to lose a ton of money on this, but I, I think because of the way that they purchased this one drink, they really appreciated the way we did this. The one thing that one time, let's offer them this. It's, it's just a way of, you know, us being kind to our community. And yeah, you know, we'll break even. We'll make maybe some profit on it. And then you hold the results kind of with an open hand and say, I trust I trust in the idea that our generosity towards our community through our business in these different individual business ways will engender loyalty that we seek. It will engender goodwill and people will make the decision to go in the direction of the light. My plants in my window they love the light and I, I you know, rotate them constantly. And sometimes I forget, you know, if we go away for a trip, I, I find that they, you know, I have a jade plant that, you know, bend a little bit towards the light. And I'm like, oh, I, I want it to bend the other way. So I'll just turn it the other way. You know, a week, two weeks from now, it bends towards the light. And I'm like, okay, that satisfies the, um, <laughs> the, the, the mild uh, obsessive nature. Like I want it straight up. Okay. I don't want it one, one side, but customers are the same way. They know what gives them life, not just what gives them coffee, what gives them life. And if your coffee bar is that place, that's how you be consciously competitive. That's where uh, loyalty is formed. And we're not going to be so insecure as to think, okay, if they go to Starbucks on a road trip or they actually don't go to our coffee shop every single day of the week, it's okay. Nobody appreciates insecurity as a, as a you know part of a personality. It's not really attractive. It's propulsive, actually. So with some degree of security, we have to say, this is who we are. We are generous, we are warm, we are bright, we are life-giving, and we're going to use our business for those purposes. So that's another thing that I think will help you be competitive in a market where people are constantly just saying like, okay, we're gonna give 10%, 20% discounts, BOGO, um, you know, you, this, that, and the other thing. It could be, you can get a lot of FOMO, not to throw another acronym out there, but you get some FOMO and you may actually want to apply some of these things in a conscious way, but when you start to feel that desperation rise up, just like the trends, balance it with the idea of what your values are. Be patient. And if you think the only way to save your business is to do these deals, then I got to tell you, you're probably way more far gone than you could ever imagine. And there's, there's, more, there's bigger fish to fry they're at the root cause of why you're in that position to begin with. So there's no amount of buy one, get one that's going to pull you up out of a, you know, a systemically bad situation. So again, be the light, be the generous, pursue, uh, you know, life giving as part of what you do as a coffee business and, and see how it resonates with people. So let's move on to the fourth thing in our list of seven ways to be consciously competitive. And that is being present and involved. Being present and involved means I want to see who the owner is. I don't want to just, you know, never see them. I want to see you in the cafe. I want to see you at 
uh, uh, you know, a council meeting. I want to see you at a charity event or a 5K. I want to see your your staff. I want to see your business out there. This is a people business being in coffee and being involved in your community and being present for your community goes so far. You don't have to ask permission to do any of these things. Um, I've got a client where they're kind of tucked away a little bit. And they're not getting the kind of business that another competitor is getting because the competitor has way better uh, real estate, the better locations. They're, they're doing okay. But one of the things that is on the docket and we're talking about is how can you be the first mover for the community? You don't have to ask permission and you don't have to get all your ducks in a row uh, to, you know, th- to put a charity to put on even just something like a throwdown that raises money for a charity of your choice or to donate coffee to, you know, teachers at a school during Teachers Appreciation Day. Put it on your Instagram, tag them. Really, you know, serving your community that way and being present is a huge part of what it means to be a third place. And you put yourself out there, your brand gets in front of people literally in front of people, face to face. Oh, you're the owner of this coffee shop? I've always wanted to go there. Uh, you know. And now, guess what? Now that they've met you, they're probably going to go. I met the owner. They were so kind. They were, you know, for like a client of mine who, congrats big time to Getaway Motor Cafe. Been working with them um, for the last year or so here. And they just opened their cafe. But before they were even opened, they were doing highway cleanup projects. People got to know Nate and Tara, the owners of Getaway Motor Cafe. Before they were serving coffee, they were serving their community. And I'm going to tell you that that is magic. That is how you're consciously competitive. That's how you become a better version of yourself in the process as well as a company. And so embrace presence, be involved and get out there and make a difference. Um, You don't need to be perfect to do it. You just have to have the will and take the first step. Now, number five here is about communication. When you communicate with your community, you do so often through social media. And we have this tendency as coffee bars to kind of produce social media content that's so polished people just don't know who we are. When we communicate on platforms like this with our customers or our potential customers, they want to know that it's not just a brand that they're interacting with, but it's the people also behind the brand. Increasingly, uh, the words authenticity, being genuine, vulnerable, those types of things. I think open communication with your uh, people is how you remain competitive because you're keeping short accounts on things. It's, it's weird to think this, and I, I got to tell you, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a weird example, but if a pipe bursts in your cafe and you post, sorry, maintenance issue will be closed until this time, and then boom, that's, that's it, I would rather see you post a picture of the flooded cafe and yourself with a mop and be like, well, this happens in business, and um, we're really going to be sorry to miss you all, but we have to get this burst pipe cleaned up. Um, and maybe you put some air pots of coffee out front for people to have, if they're you know, relying on you that day to caffeinate them. You know, I've done this in the past where it literally was because there was a butt busted pipe and everything, it was in the winter too. So it was sucked way, <laughs> way more because it was cold. Um, but I put coffee out on the sidewalk. We brewed a bunch of coffee and said, people are already on their way. Let's give them coffee. We're not even going to concern ourselves with collecting money for this. This is just like a blip, you know, but goodwill is engendered in the process, but I'm openly communicating. I'm generous with my communication and I'm serving people through that open communication because they see that I am right there with them, whether they're a customer feeling like they're along for the journey well past the opening of your cafe, or it's your staff who you're keeping short accounts with and keeping them abreast of what's going on in the business, these are really great ways to stay competitive because then people will go to bat for you. 
they will uh, be more likely to advocate and have charitable assumption towards you when mistakes are made, which mistakes happen all the time. You're going to say something and do something that really pisses off a, a staff member or a, a customer. And that customer immediately is going to be thinking, is this characteristic of this person? And they're going to go back into their memory and think about all of the interactions that they've had with you. And if it's your norm to have this open communication and this service mindset towards people with your communication, then they're going to say, we all have bad days. Hopefully, <laughs> you know, you can't win them all, but it's more likely. So that I think is very, very uh, critical for us to focus on is that open communication and that service mindset in our communication. Now we have two more to go and second to the last here is something very practical and that is well curated menus with fresh rotating options. Coming back to the trends idea, I've always been an advocate that we keep a menu that is slim not like minimal necessarily, but something that shows tasteful restraint and is curated in a way that takes into account all of the categories of people that you serve in your coffee shop. So if somebody just drinks tea, they don't actually drink coffee. I mean, they're going to a coffee shop, but plenty of people go to coffee shops looking for only tea and other beverages. And so we have to have something for them. They are a very large category of customer. Uh, categories of customers include people who like sweet, milky coffee, who like just coffee coffee, who like uh, third wave espresso beverages that are shorter in stature. Um, so you can go down the line and kind of think, what are the major categories? And what kind of things do we have on our menu that are consistently present and offer it all the time, but then how can we freshen things up by offering these signature beverages, some seasonal options, locally sourced ingredients, and keeping people's interest peaked. This happens also with the menu that you have for coffee beans on the shelf, bringing in new options. We heard from Christopher Ferran um, that this is something that he did when he uh, owned Phoenix Coffee in Cleveland, which is to, you know, to release these limited runs of special coffees uh, amongst the other coffees that were stable, the decaf, the blend, the more developed coffees, the lighter coffees, the Kenyans, Ethiopians, Brazils, you know, Guatemala's, Colombia's. And, and that's just the same thing, I think, for your beverages. So you've got that stable base of always drinks, and then you've got some rotations. And these are things that you come up with based on information that you know already about what your customers love and what you love in the two meet together. You know, that's why people come to your coffee shop. And so uh, this is one of the ways we stay competitive. Keep things fresh, keep things also continuing to improve. So it might be that you release a beverage and you're really excited about it, but customers really hate it. Well, you know, don't try again next year. If they really hated it, come up with something new, listen to them. And that kind of brings us to our last one here, which is you need to make space in your calendar, in your schedule for staying connected to all of this. So everything that we've talked about sounds, I think, you know, cause I'm the one saying it, <laughs> I guess it sounds good. Like if you employ these things in your coffee shop, you're like, yeah, I could see how you could get good results from this, but wh wh what time do I have to do this? Well, um, there is a certain amount of time that needs to be set aside to be able to read the temperature of your customers and your staff and the industry and what can be done in your business. What is the synthesis of your staff, your customers, your own desires and the industry? And that becomes a policy that becomes a menu item that becomes a process. That's a decision that you make that's well thought out because it's considering all of those things. And in order to consider something well, you need to know it well. And in order to know it well, you need to have spent enough time in contact with it, with that element to, to be informed, to know. And that is part of your responsibility. If you're a leader to stay informed, to stay connected, 
to make decisions in the business based on that connection. But if you're not safeguarding your uh, time on a weekly basis and all you're doing is putting out fires and you're chasing this or that, um, you, you know, you don't have time to stay connected, you're going to start having tone deaf decisions made all over the place because you haven't tuned yourself to the key of what your business is currently doing. If that makes sense. So very practically speaking, part of your owner's job description, part of a manager's job description has to be to carve out time to stay connected. That could be one-on-ones, that could be being in the cafe as a customer to do your work and taking notes and you know forming plans for you know things that need improvement over the course of this next quarter or this next year. But there has to be a practical process, a real process, not just a theoretical one. Um, and it has to be safely guarded. So all the things we just discussed here, I think, are going to be very powerful for your business. And they are how you can be consciously competitive. And it not only makes your business and your people better, I think it makes the industry better as well. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions about today's episode, feel free to reach out. Chris at keys to the shop.com. That's also where you can reach out if you're interested in working one-on-one with me, coaching and consulting through keys to the shop consulting. I would love to have a conversation with you. We'll set up a free discovery call, chat about what you got going on and see how keys to the shop consulting can help. Again, that email is Chris at keys to the shop.com. And if you want to talk with me face to face, one great place to do that is coffee fest. Coffee fest is coming up quickly. Uh, this year we are going to New York. That's in March, uh, the beginning of March. And then there is Louisville, Kentucky in June. Uh, we have Anaheim, California in August and then Orlando. I think that's in October or November. I'm not 100% on that. But you know how you can be 100% on that? Go to coffeefest.com and find out when these shows are and make the trip. 30 years. That's how long Coffee Fest has been in operation. Always getting better by listening to the attendees and creating an incredible lineup of resources to help you become a better retailer, a better, a better leader and business person in your coffee shop free and accessibly priced workshops, trainings, lectures on a host of different topics. I'm going to be presenting uh, in New York, in New York City coming up five different talks. So (laughs) I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be judging latte art as well. So that's going to be really fun. But on top of that, of course, there's a trade show going on. So you can interact with vendors who can supply you with some awesome services and products for your cafe. And then there's latte art, like I said, the competition, there's cold brew competition and the community. At these shows, everybody represents a different part of the coffee community and it's electric. And I hope you're gonna be a part of it. So go to coffeefest.com and use the code KEYS to get 50% off your registration for all of these upcoming shows in 2023. K-E-Y-S is the code to use when you're signing yourself and your team up for Coffee Fest. And please do say hello. Check them out again over at coffeefest.com. And with that, that is the end of our show today, everybody. I hope that you found this to be a helpful episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and share, share, share these episodes on social media with your team, with your people. It really helps out a lot. And if you love what's going on with this podcast, go to Apple Podcasts and give a five-star review. That would be awesome. Have an amazing day, everyone. And as always, I hope that today's episode has truly given you keys to the shop.